I'm pleased now to welcome in Joan Richmeyer. She's the recipient of the Henry Gray Scientific Achievement Award. Let's start off first, Joan. You've had an interesting career path. Why would an anthropologist want to study developmental biology? Well, anthropology is the study of human variation, and I got very interested in the skull and variation across primates and through evolution. And the more I learned about it, the more I wanted to know. I taught anatomy, and that was from an embryological perspective, and found out that there was a lot happening prenatally. And so to understand the growth of the skull, um, I found that you really needed to understand the prenatal development of soft tissues and spaces because they were growing dynamically long before any bone was beginning to form. So that's how I got interested in developmental biology because that's where it all the variation comes from. And what is the role of postnatal growth patterns in the production of facial morphology? Well, postnatal growth uh, is very important, uh, mostly because that's the part that's easier to study. So I think historically, most of our knowledge was based on studying postnatal growth patterns, but also in terms of craniofacial dysmorphology, craniofacial diseases, that's the phenotype, that's the, the variation and the structures that surgeons, for example, need to deal with. So they need to understand those growth patterns and hopefully integrate some of the knowledge of direction and magnitude of growth of different bones into their treatments for patients with these different craniofacial anomalies. Yeah, what are some of those challenges advancing craniofacial research and what's being done to kind of combat some of those challenges? Well, there's a lot of work being done with animal models now. We know a number of the mutations that are causative or associated with different craniofacial anomalies. And because of wonderful basic science, like what's happening at this meeting, we're able to put those types of mutations into animal models, like the mouse, zebrafish, even other uh, more bizarre animals that are useful, and study what's happening prenatally so that we can predict what will occur postnatally um, in terms of, of variation and also understand the dynamics of growth that occur prior to, prior to birth. It's really fascinating work, Joan. Thanks so much for stopping by and congratulations again on the award. Thank you, my pleasure.